Stony Bridge. Farm Stony Bridge. Stony Bridge Farm. I knew what you were thinking. Not topless Mrs. Stony Ridge and not topless Mr. Stony Ridge. Today, we're gonna take the top off the gator and the windshield off the gator, and that signifies to us that it's almost springtime. The sap is rising, the flowers are getting ready to start blooming, the honeybees are out buzzing around doing their thing, and we've got a few things to get done here on the farm. First, we're gonna take the top off the gator and we're gonna store it, and I'll show you how easy the top comes off of that. And then we've gotta put down some grass seed in the areas where the forestry mulcher did its work down on the creek side. So we wanna make sure that it takes up in grass and not in weeds. And if it does take up in weeds, we'll just continue to mow it until we kill out all the weeds and the grass takes hold. So let's go get busy guys, enjoy this beautiful spring weather. We're gonna take the top off the gator and have some fun. All right. So first of all, let me tell you, the most used tool on the farm, hands down, is this tool right here. The most used vehicle on the farm, the most used tool on the farm, the most used piece of equipment on the farm is this John Deere Gator 825i. I really like the Gator. It has a few little quirks, a few little things that I would have changed about it, and they're coming out with a new model this year. So who knows, maybe John Deere will see this and send me a Gator so we can try out the new one. I doubt it though, because I gave this one a pretty poor review, even though I can't do without it. I couldn't get this farm up and going without it. Things are just too far away. If I needed something and I was on the other side of the farm, it would literally take me 30 minutes to walk across the farm and get what I needed and walk back. It just is an indispensable tool to have here on the farm. So being an indispensable tool, it has some pretty cool gadgets. This is what's called the no scratch windshield. And it has a flip up design, basically, you flip this up, it'll allow wind to go through here. In the summertime, we take the top off and we take the windshield off. We put the windshield on in the wintertime and the roof on because it's rainy, it's nasty, and it's cold. And we don't want to freeze our butts off. Just the heat from the engine, because the radiator's up here, the engine's in the middle. Just the heat from the uh, radiator blowing the fan warms you enough to knock the chill off when you're cruising around this thing and it's... I don't know, 30 degrees outside. So pretty simply on the gator, you just flip these little connectors open and they come off and there are several of them all the way along. And the windshield is a separate piece with a rubber seal. And then here is the top. So the top just disconnects. It's easier to do this with two people. Top here, it disconnects. And I have this mirror that I use from time to time. Sometimes it's nice to have a rear view mirror and sometimes it gets in the way so I can push it out of the way. I'll post a link to this thing down there in the description below in case you want to get a mirror for your gator or your UTV that you can get out of the way when you don't need it and pull down when you do. Now my gator is a little bit different. I have lights set up here and these were to call my Sasquatch lights and then I have lights on the back, work lights. These are both the same light basically. This light and this light are both the same light. These are extras that I put on the gator and this is another extra that I put on the gator. The lighting that comes with the gator is right there. That factory lighting is absolutely substandard for doing any kind of work in the dark. And I found that what I put on the gator so far is great, but I have another light bar that we're gonna put on in a future vlog. A company sent me a light bar and wanted me to try it out. So we're gonna strap that dude on there. I want this thing to light up a field like Christmas morning. And what says Homesteader more than a bunch of lights? That doesn't say Homesteader. But what says Cool Gator more than a bunch of lights? And if you want to go riding at night and enjoy the trails, you can with these extra lights but not with the factory lights because you'll hit something because they're horrible. Let's get this guy off. It's pretty simple. You just unstrap a few of these little straps or clamps or whatever you want to call them. Um, pull them down so that they release. And I have special holes cut in right here so that my work lights would go through. It didn't affect a thing in the world, it kept me dry still, but I could also use my work lights. So I have to take the front off first and then slide the back off. The lights make it complicated. I think if I didn't have the chainsaw on here, it'd be a lot easier. Normally I like to do this with Mrs. Stony Ridge, but I like to make surprises for Mrs. Stony Ridge too. And it's a nice surprise when you get in the gator and it's all open like a convertible. It's really cool. Now let's take off the windscreen. I think it's called a no scratch windscreen or windshield. And all this is John Deere factory equipment that you can get at your dealer. They make aftermarket and I suggest do your research if you buy aftermarket. I think if we had to do it again, I would have got the full glass windshield with the windshield wiper, but I don't know. That makes for a future vlog. We gotta drill a hole in this thing and put a windshield wiper in it. That'd be pretty fun. That's it, windows off. 
Now we'll take these goodies and put them in the tobacco barn. In case you haven't noticed, the tobacco barn is kind of our seasonal barn. So we just kind of put stuff that's seasonal in the tobacco barn because we're in and out of it all the time. Now let's get down the hill here and we'll show you what we're going to do with the grass seed. So the two types of grass seed that we're going to be putting down today, one is an annual and one is a perennial. The perennial is Kentucky 32 or also known as K32. It's an endophyte free fescue grass that's good for grazing cattle. It has a little bit wider blade. It's a little bit more drought tolerant than Kentucky 31 and it's a little bit more expensive. But if we're going to do it, we might as well do it once. We might as well do it right. If we're going to have cows on this farm, we might as well get the right kind of grass. And we use it in our lawn too. And also we're putting down bags of rye grain. So these bags of rye grain, not rye grass, rye grain, they will take just like that. When you throw the seed down, it sucks up moisture and almost immediately starts to sprout a root. And that's what we want. We want it to take and then about five to seven days later, the fescue will take hold. And once the fescue starts to take hold, the rye grass is taking hold and it will shade the fescue as it begins to grow. Now the deer will eat the rye grass or the rye grass will grow up and seed itself out and grow more rye grass. But the main goal here is to get something on the ground and let it sprout quickly and that way the fescue will take better. Things I've learned here over the last few years. You may just have a lawn or you may have a small field. This works. You got a bare spot, put some rye grain or rye grass down on that, get it sprouted, and also put your fescue in there. Mix it together, and that way you get a good holt on your seed. Also, send your soil off for a soil test. All these things are important. I don't care if you're doing just a small lawn, or if you're doing a huge lawn, or if you're doing a hay field or a cow pasture slash horse pasture. All these things are very important. Things that I've learned. You can't just throw fescue seed down on a bare spot and expect it to grow. It's not going to happen. It's not going to do well. You got to be smart about it. I've been running around this farm just chasing them chickens that are running along. Yeah. I've been running around this farm just chasing them chickens that are running along. Yeah. Cause we got gold. Now here's a tool we're going to use to spread the grass seed. One thing that I like about the gator is that I can hitch things to it with a little trailer hitch, but I have to put an extension on here. I'll show you what I've got to do. But this little thing will tell you exactly what settings you need to spread your grass seed. And you can hook one of these behind your lawnmower or your gator or whatever, your tractor, whatever you want to do. Let me show you. So here's where it tells you all your settings. Now one of the things I don't like about my John Deere gator is that the hitch is way up underneath the tailgate and I have to use this extension in order to hook something to it because it's so far up underneath there i can't reach it to hang anything so we're going to put this hitch on there and we're going to slide this extension in place here's what i mean this thing's way up under here it really i guess it makes sense in uh for like off-roading and stuff like that but for actual use it just sucks it's just a pain in the butt to have to get up underneath this thing every time you uh hook something up to it slide that guy in now, this is my first time using this apparatus, so bear with me. Might be learning something together here. So the way this thing works is it has a little lever on it. You move the lever to whatever position you want, and that opens and closes this hole. So we're in the heavy grass seed for the first run, so we'll put it on setting number four because I want to put it on nice and heavy. And then we'll go fine grass seed, setting one or number two. We'll probably do number two for the fescue. Now, like I just said, guys, I've never used this piece of equipment before. I have used this thing right here. This is one tool that I keep on the gator all the time. It's called the Gerber Center Drive. Very handy tool if I can get it to open up. Open. Open, please. It's a problem here. This is the Gerber Center Drive, and I need the knife. I need it right now. I'm working. I'm on the farm. I need it. I need a tool. It's going to be reliable. Let's make sure I'm not messing up and doing something wrong. I can't get the knife. It's so sharp I don't want to get too rough with it, but the knife won't come open. The heck? Broke. Just broke it. Gerber Center Drive. 
me and Gerber are gonna have a little talk here. This thing's going back. Lifetime warranty. I did a video about this thing. It has never let me down, but right there is the proof. The proof's in the pudding. What the heck, dude? Back to the tried and true Victorinox knife. I keep several knives on the Gator. I always keep this Victorinox knife. I bought this thing years ago. I'll post a link down below to this thing. This has been an awesome knife. It didn't fail like the Gerber. I've had this thing since 1999, okay? Never failed, never sharpened it. Great knife. So the first seed we're gonna spread is gonna be our rye grain seed. And whenever you're loading a hopper up like this, always be sure you have it turned all the way off so that you don't waste grain. When a tool lets me down, it just, Man, that tool letting me down irks me. You know when you buy something at that price point, that thing's close to 100 bucks. When you buy something at that price point, you expect it to work right. I'm sure Gerber will stand by their tool, but it doesn't matter to me if you stand by your tool. If your tool doesn't work, I don't care. The sun setting. This is called the golden hour when you're filming right here. The sun setting, everything's beautiful. The light through the trees is beautiful. And that's what I'm seeding. All this area right here was what the forestry mulcher chopped up. So basically, it's just mulch and we're gonna throw some seed down on it. It should take nicely. You know sometimes you can work your butt off to try not to have to work. I don't like this thing. I'm gonna have to ride around and around and around and around and around and around when I could just take my little hand seeder and get the job done. So I'm gonna finish up with this little bit that's left and I'm gonna go with my hand seeder. This thing's ridiculous. It might be a little bit more effort on my part, but I, I think it's just it's just barely like <clears throat> spitting seed out. It's 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 not handy at all. It's, it doesn't work. Two fails, two fails in one day. Now you might be asking yourself why Stony Ridge Farmer are you doing this with this little dinky stuff when you got a tractor out there with a spreader on it. Well it's so wet I don't want to get my tractor down here. I don't want to leave ruts in the ground. The gator leaves a small enough footprint. It's nice and cool out here. It's a beautiful day. So let's just get out here and get some exercise, get some walking done. So I've got a pretty decent little system here. This is my little shoulder bag grass cedar. You just walk along with it. Um, it's, it's a great cedar. It's what it's my go-to basically whenever I need to throw some grass seed down quick. Honestly, I might end up walking two or three miles by doing this, but I'll get my exercise and I think I'll get better coverage. So I'll be, I'll be happier with the result. So the way I do this is I have a large pot and I just pour my grain into the pot here and then I take my pot and pour it over into my little baggie. It also helps to have two people to do this, but you can do it on your own. Now don't get me wrong, I don't think that uh, pull behind cedar is a bad idea. I just think it's a bad idea for the chore that I'm trying to accomplish. Throw my little satchel over my head here, get a little exercise. And basically all you do, there's a little tab right here, squeeze that tab, it opens up a gate and you just spin this right here and it slings out your seed. Works great. Just like that. Now folks, from here on out, basically I'll just reload this thing. I've got about 300 pounds of seed to put down over about a four acre plot right here. But I'll just walk around and seed it. And basically what my goal is, is to make one swipe and then do a half swipe over top of it. So I'm half lapping over top of each. In other words, one row, then half laps over the next, half laps over the next. And that way I get good seed coverage, which is very important. And hopefully this will blossom into a beautiful green, velvety, carpety, beautiful, whatever you want to call it. Creek bottom. Creek bottom, that's what I'll call it. Guys, thanks a lot for watching. Click that like button. Oh, yeah, click that like button. Come on back and see me here on the Stony Ridge Farm. I appreciate you. Hope you learned a little something today and hope you had fun on the journey. We'll see you next time, all right? Take care. Well, come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife. Now, let's take a minute to talk about my belly, okay? You gotta have some leverage. It's not a gut, it's a lever. A beautiful lever that enjoys cheeseburgers.